European airlines are scrambling to put on new flights and use bigger planes as they help British tourists get home before Portugal is officially off the UK green list. If holidaymakers miss the Tuesday deadline, they'll be forced to isolate for 10 days upon return and have numerous COVID tests. Airfares between Portugal and the UK have soared in response to the surprise decision from the British government. Shares in European airlines are falling for the second day. KLM's shares are down 1.2%, down 5% since Thursday's announcement. EasyJet and Ryanair have shed around 7% over the period. Peter Elbers is CEO of KLM. He joins me from Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. Peter, I hope you can hear me um, and the connection is, is OK. Uh, the Portugal business, I mean, it was a shock and it has destroyed that confidence that people had that things might be getting back to something approaching normality. Yeah, well, it clearly shows there's uh, the, the recovery is definitely there, but it's going to be shaky and rocky. And I think the recent announcements indeed by the UK government on Portugal are a confirmation of that. Uh, on a positive side, we saw today some good news from France, where the government has decided to uh, allow US travelers who have been vaccinated to get into the country. So the, the trajectory is in the right direction, but clearly it's going to be a bumpy and, uh, and uh, shaking recovery. Do you think we fooled ourselves or holidaymakers fooled themselves into either because we wanted to believe it was going to be better, we really hoped it was going to be, but the reality is it's very difficult. Well, the reality is very uncertain, and I think precisely what travellers need today is some certainty and some predictability uh, when they go, if they can come back, what are the rules to come back? And I think it's really also important for the EU to step up here and to harmonise the rules within Europe and to make sure that these holiday makers, especially after such a long and difficult period where many people have been locked up in their houses and couldn't go anywhere, it's really a need for people to fly and to travel and, and go with confidence on their, on their holiday. With vaccination coming up, we, I, I believe we can have some confidence, but the next couple of weeks are still going to be shaky. Right. And, and you, you say the EU. Now, the EU has got the Green Pass in place and some countries are already starting to issue it. More will come along and issue it. Do you think enough is being done? Are you calling for more coordination? Yes, I think coordination has been the key factor, or I should say the absence of coordination has been the key factor. Uh, this, the EU is taking some steps now with the announcements on that, that green passport to be in place as, as per July. Uh, and thereafter, quickest implementation by all the member states. And I think this harmonization is really key and it has really hampered all our business and all our travel over the past, uh, over the past 12 months. And with the holidays coming up and with airports becoming busy again, we really need more harmonization and coordination between these states. Let's talk about KLM. I, I noticed that you're going to be flying 80% of the route network, obviously not at the same capacity, and you are already adding new long-haul long, long routes. Um, so, to a large... I mean, when do you go cash positive, do you think? Well, indeed, our, our philosophy has been to operate as much as possible of the network. And I should say in this quarter, we have been operated roughly 90% of the destinations, 50% of the capacity with a quarter of the, of the passengers. Fortunately, the passenger numbers are, are increasing rather quickly and rapidly at this point in time. And that gives us confidence to add some more long-haul destinations and even announce some more leisure destinations like Orlando in the US as per the winter season. So we'll gradually bring bringing back our, our network with the expectations that over the next couple of weeks and months uh, traffic will gradually resume and I think we can take confidence what we see domestic US for example that will happen in Europe as well and with that in place we can see international and long-haul travel resuming as well. In terms of your balance sheet and the recent decision that the aid given to Air France KLM um, were, does not meet the state aid rules are you worried you'll have to pay it back and related to that Related to that, how are your talks going with your government to keep their share of increased ownership as low as possible? 
Yeah, well, the, the, indeed, the, uh, the, the ruling uh, or the court has decided that uh, it needs to be more and better substantiated. That's being in place. That process of having more and better substantiation is in place now. That's to, to be done between the EU or the European Commission and the, uh, and the, uh, uh, and the, uh, uh, the court. Um, and, of course, we provide there the info and we have every confidence that that will move in the, in the right direction. Finally, United Airlines buying Boom's supersonic planes. I mean, it's garnered a huge amount of interest. I've always said I never thought that there'd be a commercial supersonic flight in my lifetime. So, are you looking to buy Boom planes too? <laughs> no, we're not looking. No, I, I thought it, and, and, and in, of course, I had the same or similar reaction, uh, Richard, like, like you had. Uh, I think it's, it's an interesting uh, proposition to, to see what's happening. The, the condition they, they put to it, that it should be fueled completely uh, with, uh, with biofuel. Uh, I would really try to have a good understanding how that works out. But no, I think we focus on the recovery first before we are in, a, in the process of uh, reviewing these uh, type of new planes. And, okay. and if we see all the efforts we do at sustainability, we, we seek for a maximum effort for our biofuels. And I'm not sure whether that is into, uh, into supersonic planes. Uh, good to see you, Peter. You're looking well. Thank you for taking time on, on a Friday night to talk to us from Schiphol. Thank you.